So let me kick this off. Uh, and so everything that I show you are just pic pictures illustrating sort of my thoughts, right? And I think one thing that connects us in this industry and that we're really passionate about is obviously the home. And I think that's, that's how I wanted to start off, that everybody's here because that's what we're focusing on. Being in secondary or primary homes, that's what this industry all is, is all about. And I'm really glad that you made it to this event this morning. Um, let's talk about the past, right? And, you know, it's hard to think that the past is still here. <laughs> in what the industry is all about and what the industry is doing. You know, the past, th this industry has been around for a very, very long time. I heard 100 years this, this, this week, but I think, you know, we probably were sharing caves with each other as well. So it's probably been uh, around a lot longer. And interestingly enough, only with, uh, with the, the rise of Airbnb, we started to talk about sharing economy. But what is it when you share a second home that you rent out that's also sharing? So it's a sharing economy has been around for, for, for decades, for a very, very, very long time, and it's, it's not a huge phenomenon, right? I mean, if you share a couch, that's maybe a different thing, and we all know the peer-to-peer -peer business and sharing couches is not really what uh, moves the needle here. It's just, uh, it's just a good uh, marketing uh, gimmick, but ultimately we know by the consumer behavior that they rather um, shave themselves without the owner look, peeking through the, the keyhole, right? So, the, we, this industry has had an amazing evolution uh, over, the, over the period of time, and it hasn't really gotten where it needs to go. So, the past is old-fashioned, you know, <clears throat> and, and some of you heard that story, but I, I, I still want to share it. When I started at the, uh, Interhome in 2005, I, I was lucky to, to meet Brian Sharples and Carl Shepard uh, when they founded... Um, Home away in 2005. They came to Zurich. They wanted to understand the industry. <clears throat> so we had a few beers together at the airport. And then I said to Brian, what, what is your plan with home away? What, what's your vision with home away, right? And he said, my vision with home away is to create a fully respectable vertical within the travel industry. Because until then, this was vacation rental, as we called it at the time, was not recognized as a vertical in the travel industry. But the value creation was already there, and it was big, but it was even more fragmented at the time. So I said to him, this is exactly the vision that I share with you. And with me at Interhome, I didn't have the, the ways and means and capital to make that happen. But you know, for him, he raised 450 million from technology crossover ventures to acquire a VRBO. And that was the biggest news that the vacation rental industry in 2006 has ever, ever seen at the time. I remember the day when this was announced that Homeway raised 450 million, and I can assure you we started to have sleepless nights because we had no clue what this monster can do and how quickly do they, do they acquire businesses. And over the course of the time before we sold the business to Expedia, they, they, they acquired like 30 companies. Right, so it was a it was a it was a consolidation uh, story, <clears throat> and it was only in the listings business. And the second one in 2007, Focusrite realized that there's, that's a super interesting vertical, and it's going to come. So they gave Brian some stage time at the conference in 2007, and um, 2007 Brian was on stage. One of the questions was. Why do you only list and why is it not bookable? And Brian's answer was, we will never make our inventory bookable because the, the owner wants to control who comes and stays at his house. <laughs> Think about it. He got off the stage. I literally grabbed him by the throat and said, you are totally nuts. Because you will, that, if you want to scale that business, you can't just acquire a listings business. It needs to be bookable because the consumer requests it. It's not about the owner, it's about the guest, right? That evening, and I'll tell you that story as well because that's one of my most famous story. That evening, I was lucky enough to be invited by, by the president and founder of Focusrite, Philip Wolf, to attend uh, a VIP dinner with 35, uh, 42 
industry leaders in the online travel space. I knew two people in that dinner. We were actually cooking a meal in the kitchen of, of, the, of the conference hotel. Why I got invited to this dinner, I still don't know. Maybe Philip felt very sorry for this lonely guy selling Tupperware coming from Switzerland. We'll, we might as well just invite him to that dinner so get him going in the industry. So we sat down on the table, and there was these big tables of, of 10. And as you are you know, starting to, to, to get talking before the event started, as you start to introduce yourself, as you do, right? And uh, so I did. So the, the guy on the left to me, good-looking gentleman, very polite, I said to him, what's your name? And what do you do for a living? And his introduction was, well, I'm Jeff Boyd. I'm the CEO and president of Priceline. And I was like, oh, excuse my ignorance, Mr. Boyd. It's very nice to meet you. And, uh, and he's like, what do you do for a living? And this is really how this business evolved, I, I guarantee you that. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a property manager in Switzerland. We control 24,000 properties. And uh, he says, oh, that's interesting. And oh, I saw this presentation of Brian today. I love that stuff. But that stuff is not bookable. So what do you do with that crap, right? And when it's bookable, we could really be interested in that with Priceline and Booking.com. Then I said to him, well, there's something you don't know. Because a property manager has exclusive inventory, bookable on XML interface, 24-7. It's all there. Data is there. And he goes, seriously? It's like, yeah, it's all there. It's all there. He goes, that's great. He literally pulled out his mobile phone at the table, sent Darren Houston an SMS, and said, you're going to have to meet this guy. Two weeks later, I was sitting in the office in Amsterdam at Booking.com. And in 2008, we were the first property manager to integrate vacation rental into Booking.com. And that has revolutionized what's now happening in terms of distribution. Now, you can either hate me or love me for that. But ultimately, I needed to look after my distribution. And one thing I needed to do when we talk about the past, I desperately, desperately wanted to get rid of my catalogs. And that was definitely one of the, bre the best moves I could do to get rid of these freaking catalogs, which are the worst consumer experience ever, right? Either you use them so the kids can reach up to the kitchen bench or they end up on the toilet where people just flick through it for hours and hours and hours and uh, occupy the toilets and that's not really a compelling user experience. So <clears throat> we had to get rid of that stuff. So that's, that's really, that's about the past. So a year later we announced a focus right integration of property management and I guess Booking.com has mastered that over the years. They even tried Villas.com, didn't need it. They beautifully integrated it. And I'll talk about this in the future when we talk about convergence as well. Interesting enough, at that dinner, the gentleman to my right, exactly same story. What's your name? My name is uh, Steve Kaufer. What do you do for a living? Well, I'm the CEO of, of TripAdvisor. And in 2009, we were the first property company to integrate with TripAdvisor as well. So, but each company has mastered this challenge a little bit in different success. Um, <clears throat> so, offline, you know, does anybody know what this is? Actually, funny enough, I have a one and a half year old daughter and she has one of these pull along telephones and she already knows what to put on her ear, right? But she also, uh, she also takes the remote control of the television and wants to talk with it. So we really have a, a, an amazing evolution uh, taking place. But I was amazed, and I'm still amazed today, how offline and analog in terms of process and everything this industry really is. So <clears throat> we're having this evolution happening here, uh, and this revolution happening here from where we came from. I don't know really at which stage we are right now. And maybe the last one could be Steve Milo. Um, you know, being out there, you know, being very aggressive to this industry, which helps us all to better uh, organize our business. But we are really sort of somewhere in the middle right now when it comes to, to property management, and, and we call it pro professional property management. So having said all that, um, and, and what has happened over the years with this evolution, and now it's home away, now it's Airbnb, there's, I, might, I say that the, the game on top of funnel is over, and it's, it's just super hard. Everybody's thinking what's going to happen. And I thought the best picture I could illustrate that it's like we're lying in a tumbler and somebody's just about to press the freaking button, right? And I think that's, I could not illustrate the, the present better than saying, you know, we're, we're actually in a tumbler when we talk about professional management. 
We have, there's so much technology, there's verticalization happening like crazy. And interesting enough, the vacation rental industry has not learned from the travel industry because everybody wants a piece of pie, a piece of the pie of the value chain end to end. And that creates a ton of complexity. And the complexity feels like being in a tumbler. And now we're seeing a lot of property managers, especially small size, being super challenged because they get lost in the top of funnel while the content aggregation is, is going on non-stop, right? Non-stop. And, and this is really, really, really challenging. So the, the present, and that's what I wanted to make the link to, I, I, I would love to show some data as well. And, uh, and this is just a snapshot to sort of put the picture around it in terms of discussion. Because one thing that, that I can tell you now, the number of properties in this game, is my, my view is totally irrelevant. Totally irrelevant. What is relevant is having the right stuff at the right place, at the right price, with the right availability. That's what matters. You can have millions of listings and it's not bookable. You only have one week availability. That doesn't get you anywhere, right? I say that any, any property below 60 days availability, it's not even worthwhile putting on your inventory because it's not going to create your returns. And I'll get to that in a second. So this is London. This is amazing, right? I mean, this is a totally insane in terms of how many properties are out there. This, this map would have been pretty much white about 10 years ago. Definitely with property managers around and had inventory in London. But this is insane, right? But these are properties, doesn't show you availability, right? And then you look at listings in, in London. So London General Overview, we have 50,000 with Airbnb. And this is what I said, Li listing count does not matter. It's actually inventory that counts and availability that counts, right? And then you have booking.com, and I will show you the next slide, which is interesting. So booking.com with 11,600 units, home away 7,000, and TripAdvisor has 5,400 units in London on their platform. And now this is interesting. The type of listing on Airbnb is 54% are entire homes and 47% are actually shared places, which I found astonishing. It's probably one of the highest uh, in, 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 <clears throat> in their portfolio in terms of shared spaces. But here comes the most important piece to me is that because the 11,500 units of Booking.com, 100% bookable. That's it. Transaction, 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 transaction. You know, for, for the user, user experience, it's just a ton better than anything else. Airbnb has only 37% of their inventory that is actually instant bookable. And the consumer of tomorrow and today is not going to, you know, like to to muck around with that, and I'm, <clears throat> I'm amazed, and I'm not, a, I'm not somebody against Airbnb, but I'm amazed everybody talks about it. Why? Have you made some experience with Airbnb? Is that really cool? You know, it, it works maybe once in 20 times that is really a cool experience, and all the other 19 are really not so cool experience? I mean, seriously. And everybody talks about it. We have helped to build the biggest marketplace in the world for uh, secondary and primary homes uh, for rental because everybody talks about it. But when you then actually look at the user experience, I'll give you one example, talking about present. When I was working for Folksride, I was living in Zurich, and I commuted to Manhattan every month for one week. I wrote to 20 Airbnb hosts in Manhattan, very close on where my office was, and said, guys, I'm coming once a month for one week from Sunday to Friday to Manhattan, and I would like to have a place to stay, and I would like to leave my suitcase behind. How many replies did I get? One. One reply. The other 19 didn't even bother replying to me. So what did I do? I stayed at an Oasis collection. <clears throat> so there's some branding out there. I'm not invested in Oasis collection, but I love their product. So this is just, this is, this, this is crazy. This is not what it's all about, right? And you guys who look after properties and do this professionally, we need to, we need to fight for that, but we need to get better at it as well, right? 
We need to get better at it. Home away, 31%. London host types, this is interesting, but this is a bit distorted. Um, actually, this, this is distorted because multi-listings on Airbnb is only 16%. And 84% are actually single listings, but because of the legislation, they have obviously uh, you're not allowed to do multi listings, and then therefore a lot of people do actually single listings, but they're still multi management sites, right? So thanks, Alex, for that for that hint this morning at eight o'clock when we're still having coffee in our apartment. Um, then we have home away multi listings and and single listings, and this is interesting in terms of supply. So Airbnb. If all that would available be 24-7 and all the rooms in terms of room uh, comparison, Airbnb would have 47% of the hotel inventory in London. But obviously, if you then compare the availability, a hotel is, is available 24-7 each room. So that's obviously, that's just by sheer numbers and not by, by availability. So I, that's, that's a bit of where we talk about where we are currently. But it's a total freaking chaos out there, right? Everybody wants to connect. Everybody wants to be everywhere. And nobody has really, really, really figured this out uh, where it's going to go. And uh, you know, I wouldn't want to be the guy there on the ladder, because if he pulls the wrong plug, maybe the whole power system goes down. And I think we need to become very focused. And I will talk about that later. So my take is, and that's what I've said over and over and over again, the things that this industry needs are standards. And when I talk about standards, I don't talk about that every house and room and everything will need to look the same, because it will never do, because that makes the industry compelling, right? That's, that's perfectly fine. But when I talk about standards, I talk about data standards, I talk about distribution standards, I talk about you know, the professional standards when it, when it comes to guest engagements. So because, as we said, the consumer of today and tomorrow will expect more and more hotel-like services. And we cannot change that. You know, if you think that you can change somebody else, well, then good luck. The only thing you can change is yourself. And that's something, that everything that starts is always at your own nose tip. And I repeat myself over and over and over again. So we need more standards. And I'm, that's why I actually put a standard photo of two tracks. It, you know, we will never totally standardize it. But at the moment, it looks more like this than like this. And that's what <clears throat> something we need to do. We need to get together as an industry a lot smarter. You know, hotel lobbies, hotel associations, super powerful bodies. In this industry, we don't have vehicles like that when we can discuss certain standards and how we run businesses and whatever. And, you know, the health and safety, all this stuff is still looming out there. And if we don't build standards, we also fight regulations. So that's something we need to keep in mind. Second, we need to become more professional. More professional. And this is the hardest piece. The last mile is the hardest piece. In terms of quality, in, in terms of efficiency, reliability, you know, in, in the classical way, present vacation rental companies, especially large ones, they just throw manpower at the problem and they don't throw technology and create efficiencies at the problems, right? In order to safeguard quality and everything else. And this is, this, we, we can only get out of this Tupperware image if we really focus on these issues. Because everybody talks about Experience, experience, experience. This is you know, a lifetime holiday, once a year, the family, whatever. And it needs to be a super great experience for the guests to come back. And we want to get more. We also want the hotel guests to come to us. And for still a lot of people, it's not compelling because we're also not so good in doing a good job in communicating our value proposition. We're not good in communicating our value proposition to the hosts as well as to the guests. They still don't know what they can expect because we, we don't have certain standards, right? And I know in, for, for some of you, I sound like a broken record um, in terms of, in terms of uh, what's happening in this industry and you know who has nailed it in terms of equipment, in terms of kitchen, in terms of cleanliness and everything else. I'll give you a little example how individual we are. 
every year we did a big management meeting at Interhome and we always went to different destinations that we had. Once we went to Tuscany. So we had 50 managers across the world who came to Tuscany and we stayed at a beautiful uh, sort of uh, vacation rental, um, was, was about several houses in one location, so we had an awesome time. And then we went out and we used, we, used, uh, we had this qualification uh, questionnaire checklist to rate a property. And so we went, so it's eight pages long, so you need to rate, you know, the, the view, the place, the cleanliness, the authenticity, the quality of furniture, amenities, and everything else. And then at the end, a certain score came up, and, and depending on the number of score, it was either a one star, two star, three star, four star, or a five star. We had probably people coming from 19 different countries, or actually 20 different countries, who came and we rated all the same places. What did we get? we got spreads between two and five star on one location. And they all said, we're vacation rental professionals and they've worked for, Inter for Interhome for like 25 years. Interesting. So we are so individual. That's again why I said we need these standards. That is so super important and the quality. You know, for a French, and I don't want to <laughs> you know, stand on anybody's feet, but for a French, maybe this is okay. But for a German, he says, I wouldn't let my dog sleep in this place. And another one says, well, and, 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 and then it comes the guy from, from England, and he says, well, the kettle was dirty. And then the, the Italian guy says, well, what do you need a kettle for? You drink espresso, so come on, right? So and this is what this is all about. And we will never get rid of that, but we need to get better at it. We need to get better at it and create these standards, and we need to be damn professionals. I wait for the days where I don't need to pack my kitchen knives to go to a vacation rental but I tell you, we are far away, far, far away. So when I go into a place and check it out, and I'm not, I'm not crazy about it, but there's certain standards we need to meet. So when I go and go to a vacation rental, first thing I do, I go to the toaster and turn it upside down. And till today, I have not come across a toaster where no breadcrumbs from the, the, from the premium rental came out. Hasn't happened yet. Second thing, you open the filter on the dishwasher. So then you can see the history of the place for the last six months with all the food that is in there. Uh, that's, and th that, doesn't, that doesn't take anything. That does not take anything. And then you open the kitchen drawer, and then you find knives that wouldn't kill a dead dog. It's just not cool. And you want to slice a tomato in, in the morning at 8 o'clock, and instead of slicing the tomato, you're squashing it because the knife wouldn't cut through it. I mean, that is just not cool. And this is basics. And then you're getting so hungry that you think, okay, if the tomato doesn't work, I'm going to make fried eggs. You pull the frying, pan, uh, the frying pan out. Do you know what Teflon is? Well, these pans don't have Teflon on it. So forget the eggs or boil it because it will stick to the pan and you will never get it out of the pan or, or you need to fry it with a ton of oil. That is not cool. And that's, if we don't get over that basic hurdle, we cannot unlock more consumers in terms of growth and we cannot uh, unlock more Property, manage, uh, property owners to give us inventory. So we need to be far more professional. And I said, this guy is an absolute professional making his, his, uh, his pasta by his hands. The wow effect is missing. And you know, we think, yeah, but you know, they know, our guests know they need to bring their own toilet paper. Get real, get real. You know, if I arrive with my family on a Sunday night after 10 hour driving and I have five kids and I have half a toilet roll in the house, I go nuts. I mean, this is just not cool. But if there's a bottle of wine, a little note, and saying, welcome to our house, and I get, I, get a, I get a call or an SMS, have you arrived well, is everything okay? Of course, after 10 hours, I don't want to see the owner chewing my ear off how beautiful his house is and tell me the story of his grandmother and grandfather and everything else while I just need to get on with my stuff. I'm happy to check in without somebody, but it, at least something is there. That's, that's about professionalization of this industry. And we need to create a wow effect because then everybody talks about it. And I tell you what, <clears throat> and we know that, one angry customer will destroy a hundred customer. It's, it's just simple. And if we cannot get that right, we can't get the industry on a higher level. Because if you book a Hilton hotel, you know what you're going to get. If you book a Savoy, you know what you're going to get. In this industry, still today, you don't know 
what are you going to get? And the customer knows what, he got, what he's going to get, but we need to have standards that they say this is a cool way to spend vacation. So let's talk about the, the current situation. This is my OTA slide, right? So uh, everybody can make up his picture. So here we have the host and the guest. The poor host is the ball. And, uh, and, and everybody's fighting for it. And I don't know who is the one who's actually closest to the ball. And I wouldn't comment on the people on the sideline there either. But this is how I see it. It's, it's a fight that's going on. And you know what my take is on that? When, when Brian Chesky goes out publicly and says, you know, we are now on a, on a head-to-head, basically, war with Booking.com, nothing could have been happening better for our industry because that distracts them a little bit in terms of what we do and do, uh, do it better as well. So I think that's something, because that fight will continue to go and it will not increase. I'm just saying, keep your eyes open for Google because we tend to forget in our conversation, we always talk about the same stuff. Airbnb, booking, trip, home away. You know, and some of them are doing a better job and, are, and the others are doing a worse job. But nobody's talking about Google. Nobody, it's, Google is just, yeah, it's a top of funnel stuff. And people say to me, Simon, you know, how could they not take 12 billion from the travel industry? And I tell you, Google can do that at a flick of a switch. If they take 10% and doing direct business in terms of transactions, they can, they can get the 12 billion themselves pretty quickly if they really want to do that end to end, right? <clears throat> and it's happening slowly. They've started, they announced it. We heard it from Javier on, on uh, Friday and Monday in, uh, in Paris. It's starting to happen. Facebook, yeah, it's good for ads, this and that engagement. Yeah, Facebook has also the power. Then we talk about voice as well. So here comes my famous story about the brand then, when we talk about the OTA. So what do you do with your brand? And I don't want to go on a, a very long time about this, but build your brand with the consumer while he's with you. We had this discussion last night, quite interesting. Said, so how can we reach the customer? I mean, if he stays at your place, then you might have a slight chance to reach him, right? So if the OTA doesn't share the data with you, then you find better other ways to get the data from the customer, number one. Number two, he stays with you. So he's therefore in your property, so you definitely have a chance. But you need to do something about the brand in the destination, in communicating with the consumer, with whatever. You have so many opportunities to do your brand building. I think our industry is not good at, at customer relationship management. CRM is not happening. The repeat rates are too low. It's just not we, – we're not good enough. We've been operationally focused and thrown up tons of stuff at it, but we have not been good with the brand building. And the brand is not happening at top of funnel anymore. Yeah, but, you know, I've worked so hard. It's, you know, it's a, family, it's a family company for three generations, and we're so proud of our brand. Is it great? You're still printing catalogs? Yes. Okay. But then you have another problem, right? So, so this is not about, you know – the, the traffic is there. We need to embrace the OTAs. And that was my view in 2008 when I started to integrate B2B distribution that I wanted to play with as many as I possibly could. Today we have channel managers. I had a channel manager at Interhome in 2010 and we had already about 40 channels at the time. And we, we said, I don't want to be hanging myself then when 80% of my occupancy is coming from Booking.com in 10 years. We need to play with everybody possible. So, so they will bring you traffic. They will bring you guests. And you do the rest. And then do proper uh, uh, relationship management. You know, I, I experienced something that you would not believe. When I said, we, I want all the arrivals to be called until Monday morning from a Saturday. The response of my operations people was, no, we can't do that. Then we get too many complaints. What's all wrong? So we don't call them. Because if they, they call if they have a problem. And we're still in that. That's ridiculous. So I think we have a huge opportunity to do brand building, but it needs to be done in a different way. Focus on the product. Focus on the experience. You know, in 2006, when we conducted the first focus ride study at Interhome, we asked the guest, do you remember who you booked your vacation rental with? Guess what? 70% said, no, we don't remember. 
and you're working your ass off in the operation to get, you know, to make your business work, this is not really cool. And we haven't done that very well. You know, I still go to places today where I don't even have, I don't even have information about the place with the branding in, in the location. I mean, the easiest stuff. I'm not saying you have to print your logo on, on toilet papers or whatever. I mean, that's, but, but there are some opportunities out there to do definitely better brand building uh, than what, what is happening. Engage socially. You know, try to find what is the right balance and how can I engage with the guest and make their experience unforgettable. And there's huge ways. They're creating content like crazy. And we in this industry are not capturing that content. Other, comp other verticals are far more professional in capturing content. I mean, this experience in a rental is massive. Photos are going through the roof, but we're not capturing that content. Therefore, you can't utilize it for SEO. So we know how this game works, right? <clears throat> we need to do more in the technology side. And I'm not, you know, I, I loved what, what Tobias said on, on the closing panel on Tuesday. You know, this is a total joke that we are, that there are certain, certain uh, property management companies are called next gen or tech enabled. I mean, that is the single biggest joke I have ever heard. That is insane. That doesn't exist. And anybody who is still working on an AS400 today, well, get ready, because you might have a problem very soon. So this is, we need to do that if we like it or not. Tech enabled, that, we just need to do our job, and we need to do it more efficient. We need to use technology at its maximum to create efficiency, you know, reduce operational expenditure, because the margin compression is around the door. And if we don't get our efficiencies up, and we can't react to the margin compression that is coming because of this intermediation that actually the, 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 big, proper, uh, the big OTAs are actually pushing down, we're going to have a huge problem. So we need tech to actually reduce our operational expenditure and have a better guest uh, engagement going forward. And we, we need to be all tech enabled. But there's no such thing. And, you know, a lot of things is just smoke and mirror. I can assure you that. Because if you, if you lift the carpet and say, we are fully tech-enabled, yeah, bullshit. You still have manual processes. You still don't have certain things down pat. And we need that, that applies to the <clears throat> entire industry and not just to individuals. Because this is the consumer we're going to deal with in the future. I mean, I'll, this, this, this statement could be for my 17-year-old daughter, seriously. Wake me up when I'm famous. I mean, it's time to wake up now because the future consumer will keep us up at night, I can assure you. And we talk about convergence. Convergence is here. The consumer expects hospitality from a tent to a five-star hotel, service departments, everything will come together. And the, the expectation is going to be similar across all the different verticals going forward because this is what the consumer expects, right? This is not Google. This is unbundling our services. So if you can, so, so first of all, past and, and today, is that the first problem that we have, we talk about commission. And I urge you, when you start talking about commission, that we all talk about the same thing. Because that's, I really, that's something that irritates me a great deal, because I get calls that how can you live of 20%? You know, here they do 20 and others do 50. So first thing, still today, that's one thing I did that, that was interesting too, and I don't want to knock anybody. We once, in a management meeting a long time ago, made, made an exercise with the top management of my company to say we do a margin calculation with everybody. Right? So we had 20 guys. When we had one example, and they needed to calculate the margin. What is the net margin at the end of the day? And I can assure you we had 20 different results. Why? Because this industry still doesn't know its unit economics. You know, they look at cost of sales, they look a bit at, at operational expenditure, but they don't, they don't look at the whole, the whole picture. Because if you would understand your unit economics, your inventory looked different, your yield management looked different, everything would look totally different. But this industry has still not understood that. 
and now unbundling is coming and you don't know your margins because you either have a net margin or you, ha or you have a net price and you have a gross price. So is it you who controls the price or is it the owner that controls the price? Is the owner, do you give the owner a net price and then you can play with it? And if I would be me, I would only do net prices with owners and give as much flexibility as you possibly can so you can also distribute distressed inventory because the owner expects a certain price and if that is not met, then well, you have to contact him and say, can we do something together? And that is just, that, that, that is a problem because margins are there, but we need to first talk about the same margin. Number one, is it top-down calculated margin? Is it bottom-up calculated margin? Has an average difference of 30% alone? Because we need to understand what our services cost. What is a key handling cost? What is a cleaning cost? How much can we make on that? And that's another thing that I'm totally amazed that they, there's not more, made more money on cleaning. You need to have a margin of 10 to 20% on cleaning. Definitely, because the guest pays it. And that again goes into your margin calculation, right? Because if you start unbundling, because the future host wants to have more control of his inventory. And we still have property managers out there who go out and say adamantly to the owner, if you don't give me exclusivity for one year, I wouldn't take your house. The future owner, I can guarantee, will say to you, go to hell. Because I want to do the marketing, but I don't want to do the cleaning, I don't want to do the key handling, I don't want to do everything else. Does it, that we, this flexibility will come. Hence, unbundling is unstoppable, because we want choice. And here again, it starts your own OSTIP. You want choice? Well, our hosts want choice too. And if we don't start unbundling and getting our calculations right, your margins will disappear. So let's talk about the future. The future, I don't believe in this guy, but that's me. I like the human touch, okay? I mean, I like the human touch or no touch, right? No touch is also good sometimes when you're tired and whatever, but human touch is still preferable. So I don't, in, in robotics, in our industry, uh, I don't see that around the corner. I really don't. In, in any shape or form. And I think a hotel experience, you'd rather just have an app and go to your room than having one of these things talk to you. That's bullshit. But anyway, everybody's excited about it, and, and robotics can be used for a lot of other great stuff. I think robotics in, in, in operations, and like medical treatment and stuff, there's some great usage for robotics, uh, but not in our industry. But still, we, we need to talk about the future. And this, is my, this is my funnel. <laughs> I wanted to have a sales funnel picture, and then that's what came up. So I thought that's actually quite cool, right? So this is the tumbler that is happening. The future is happening. So basically, and a tornado, the tornado spins at the bottom a lot faster than what it does at the top, right? So the OTAs are at the top. And we need to, we need to figure out to what, what we really want to do in terms of the business going forward. So we're saying the top of the funnel, where actually the storm starts, um, is not really the place to be. But unfortunately, we're down the bottom, it spins a lot faster, right? And, and then we have agency, uh, the agency model. So what I'm saying here is that we need to get far more flexible, and I'm saying that in the view of a property manager, in how we approach this business. Up and down the funnel, but not to the top of funnel. So are we an agency? Do we, are we an agency model and just get some margins on that? Are we a full property manager, and, and serving end-to-end. -end. And one thing that we haven't even thought about in this industry is owning the assets. Think about this. We are making our profits <clears throat> from actually doing very little because we just rent out someone's house and take quite a bit of money. That is not a super compelling story. So we need to think about how can we create more value? That's what I talked about before. And we even haven't talked about assets because this space is all of a sudden becoming super interesting for the big investment industry. Yes, we have seen a lot of tech investment. We have seen a lot of venture capital. And, but we haven't really seen any big uh, private equity investments with just the, ex uh, the exception of, 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 uh, of the Wyndham acquisition, which was the single biggest acquisition in this, in this industry ever, 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 ever took place. 
besides home away going to Expedia for 3.9 billion. But, and, and this has raised a lot of interest from the financial industry because they want to understand this better. And I tell you the next revolution is going to be the service department space because if you control assets, and that's what's gonna happen, your unit economics will exponentially increase. I doubt there's gonna be someone out there who's gonna buy 5,000 vacation homes uh, individually and start renting them out. But that's where the true money is going to be from a financial standpoint. So we really, really need to make sure where are we playing. I say the future of the game is we wanna control the value chain end to end, including the last mile to make sure we can have quality professionalization and everything else. I'm a true, true, true believer in that. But just doing, just listing stuff or just being intermediaries because this, this place is gonna be consolidated faster than we possibly think. Now, in hindsight, I should have taken this slide out. So, so how do we see the industry today? We see it in three cycles. So that's the, that's the funnel from the top, so the owner and the property manager who does full service in the middle. Then we have the intermediaries around who really don't know what they are, and they're really trying to figure this out. And then you have the OTAs around who really bring the traffic to the consumer. And I think this is crucial now to, to identify in which area you really want to be because otherwise you can't do too many things at once. Now, talking about voice, and that blew me away uh, to hear that 20% of the traffic uh, at booking.com is already coming from voice. That is, in search of uh, search queries for accommodation, that is massive. And everybody said, yeah, but it's not so compelling yet and it will take some time. I reckon voice is coming faster than what you think in all aspects, you know. And I, I, I love it. I have an Alexa at home and I have a Google Home at home. Actually, my kids love it more, but the problem is Alexa doesn't understand Swiss German, so my kids hate this thing. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, it doesn't respond in, in the way they talk to it. But they will get there. They can already, my kids, my, th my three-year-old son can already call his grandmother in Spain by using a voice device, right? It's insane, and it's gonna come, and it's gonna change the industry. And interesting enough, we've seen this announcement and Alex, uh, at, that um, Amazon is super keen on this space. Why are they so super keen on the space? Because the hotel space hasn't embraced it as much because why would they have a voice controlled interface while they have food and beverage uh, in, the, in the building? They don't want the customers to go elsewhere. But this industry is made for voice interaction and we need to embrace that in all shape or forms. Because I believe voice has a huge potential for an additional interface, you know, I mean, can you imagine you can say to Alexa, I need kitchen knives, that would be awesome. And then the kitchen knives will come delivered sharp. And uh, then I don't need to take them with me while I go, right? I mean, there's, that, or get me cleaning or whatever, connect me with the owner, I have a problem. I mean, there's so many huge opportunities out there with, with, with voice, uh, it's incredible. And I think this is really going to be um, the future. So I'm starting to wrap up here now. So it's time for change. It is up to you which direction you change, uh, take. And it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. But we really need to continue to change, professionalize, standardize, and commoditize the business as much as we can to build a compelling guest experience for guests and hosts. If you choose the wrong way, it's going to be a dead end, and consolidation will take place, if you like it or not, on the tech side, <clears throat> but also on the inventory side. So it's really, we have never seen more exciting times in this industry than we're seeing today, and there's lots to come. So my take is stay brutally focused, do well what you do, and do that at the best as you possibly can, and then it will work out for you, because there is a future. Thank you very much.